A very good evening aspirants. As you know, the UPSC announced the preliminary examination results day before yesterday. And we are very happy to announce you that more than 927 candidates from Shankarai's Academy has cracked the examination. In that, 70 of them has cleared the examination in their first attempt. We congratulate all the candidates who have cleared the examination. So with this happy announcement, let's move on to the newspaper analysis. Today's date is 24th of June 2022. So these are the list of news articles that we are going to discuss today. We have four different news articles. Now without wasting much time, let us move on to the first news article discussion. Now let's take up this news article for our discussion. Look at these graphs. These graphs shows the level of participation of women in rural local bodies in Tamil Nadu. In Tamil Nadu, more than 50% of elected posts are held by women. So in this context, let us discuss some of the important points mentioned in the news article. See now, look at this graph. These graphs shows the data of 1,18,978 elected representatives in rural local bodies. Out of these, 67,756 are women representatives. Thus, they account for about 57%. This is an encouraging sign because the women are politically empowered, right? But there are certain issues associated with it. Let's understand the issues with the help of some case studies. See, in the article, the author talks about the phone calls received by these representatives. The author states that most of the calls to the official mobile numbers of select women village panchayat presidents are answered by men. These men were the husbands of the women village panchayat presidents. So these gives the impression that the women representatives continue to work as proxies for their male family members. This is an issue that pervades the country and plagues female elected local government representatives everywhere. So here you must note this point, the problem of interference by husbands or immediate family members is not confined to Tamil Nadu but to entire India. Also in other cases, functioning of women representatives has been hampered not by her husband or any other family member but by her party colleagues. For example, MLAs or Panchayat Union chiefs have a feeling of apprehension that their future prospects in politics will be disturbed if women are allowed to work freely. So what can be done to address these issues? See, firstly, awareness and education should encourage women towards politics and wipe out gender stereotypes which perceive women as weak representatives. Secondly, women's leadership and communication skills need to be enhanced by increasing female literacy, especially in rural areas. They should be empowered in order to break social cultural barriers and improve their status in the society. Thirdly, internal democracy in all political parties is needed. We require inclusive political institutions. Fourthly, India should pass a bill granting 33% reservation in parliament for women so that women leaders at higher levels will help their local counterparts. Apart from this, political mentoring and skill training will enhance their political knowledge. See, this is the need of the hour. Apart from this, there should be a provision to give honor and financial rewards to the women members for their exemplary works. And finally, the rotation term of reserved seats should be made after regular intervals. It would help women representatives to fix their feet in the panchayats. See, despite the issues, the author also talks about positive side of women local representatives in Tamil Nadu. See, we already saw that calls to the official mobile numbers of women village panchayat presidents are answered by their husbands. But calls to women panchayat union chairpersons or district panchayat presidents are mostly answered by the women functionaries themselves. And in the last 10 to 15 years, there have been strong positive changes in the representation of women in PRIs. The general trend is that these women are no longer controlled by their husbands, though the influence of their husbands are still there. For example, B. Subalakshmi, chairperson of the Latur Panchayat Union in Chengalpattu district, is a postgraduate in English and belongs to the ruling DMK party. She asserted that her husband has never interfered in her functioning. She added that her husband is also a local party functionary 
but there is a clear cut boundary between her work as a panchayat union leader and that of her husband in another case k naharani who heads the kinath kadavu panchayat union in koyamtur district points out that in 34 village panchayats under the jurisdiction of her panchayat union she has been able to get repair done to 10 school buildings and have five fair price shops opened these are small yet very significant achievement so the author concludes that though women reps face certain challenges the trend are improving in tamil nadu the government is also trying to improve the communication and and managerial skills of the representatives also special attention needed to be paid to remove the bottlenecks being faced by women leaders so that's all you have to know about this news article discussion see women representatives continuing to work as a proxy for their male family members is not something new happening today so the suggested steps must be taken soon or earlier so that women can be truly represented in politics so these learned points now let us move on to the next news article discussion now let us take up this text in context article for our next discussion see this article is about a new initiative of the government called the ondc which stands for open network for digital commerce the article analyzes the features needs benefits and issues associated with this initiative so let us see all these one by one now Before that the syllabus relevant to this article is highlighted here for your reference just go through it see ONDC that is open network for digital commerce is a first of its kind initiative to pave the way for reimagining digital commerce in India it was conceived in 2020 by the department for promotion of industry and internal trade under the ministry of commerce and industry it was commenced through the quality council of india that is qci See basically ONDC will be a not for profit organization that will offer a network that is it aims at promoting open networks for all aspects of exchange of goods and services over digital or electronic networks see it is developed on open sourced methodology here open source means that the code or the steps of that process is made available freely for others to use redistribute and modify we can take the example of apple's operating system that is ios and android operating system that is os see apple's ios is closed and this cannot be legally modified or reverse engineered whereas android's os is open source and is possible by smartphone manufacturers to modify it for their hardware this is why any phone like samsung xiaomi etc can use android os but not ios and also ONDC will be using open specifications and open network protocols that is independent of any specific platform see these open protocols would be used for establishing public digital infrastructure in the form of open registries and open network gateways they will enable exchange of information between providers and consumers that means providers and consumers would be able to use any compatible application of their choice for exchange of information and carrying out transactions over ondc so in short what ondc does is it will establish an open and interoperable digital commerce network such a network will allow all the buyers and sellers to be digitally visible and transact through the open network regardless of what platform or application they use therefore it will enable local commerce across segments these segments could be mobility grocery food order and delivery hotel bookings and travel see various local businesses will be discovered across these segments and will be engaged by any network enabled application You may think that this process of ONDC looks familiar. Yes, of course, it is like the unified payments interface that is UPI system for digital payments. See, UPI powers multiple bank accounts into a single mobile application and merges several banking features. This enables seamless fund routing and merchant payments. Now, similarly, ONDC will function but not for digital payment, rather for digital commerce. This is why many news article call ONDC as UPI of e-commerce 
an important feature is ondc will be compliant with the information technology act 2000 and in the later period will also be compliant with personal data protection when the regulation for the same will be created by the government also remember presently ondc is in its pilot stage it is currently running in five cities namely new delhi bengaluru Coimbatore, bhopal and shillong but later it will be launched in 100 cities over a period of six months so now what is the overall use of ondc firstly it is expected to digitize the entire value chain secondly it will standardize operations that is operations like cataloging inventory management order management and order fulfillment thirdly it will also promote inclusion of suppliers fourthly efficiencies will be derived in logistics and finally there will be enhanced value for consumers also because consumers will be able to match demand with the nearest available supply but what actually necessitated such an initiative it was the COVID-19 pandemic. See, after first wave, ensuring essential supplies to reach across container zones was difficult, right? There was huge impact on small sellers and hyper-local supply chain functioning due to lockdowns. Pandemic showed a disconnection between the scale of online demand and the ability of the local retail ecosystem to participate because only bigger players are able to take advantage of e-commerce and small players are still out of it. Therefore, it was realized that an interoperable network was needed to solve this issue. Also, India has a fast expanding digital economy and India is operating three largest public digital platforms in the world. They are Aadhaar, which is the largest unique digital identity platform. Then the UPI, the largest digital payment ecosystem. Then the Covin, the largest vaccination platform. So an e-commerce platform was an awaited one. So now let us see some of the benefits associated with it. First, it will create new opportunities as local commerce will be a part of it. Secondly, it is a step to move from platform centric model to an open network. So far, we have Amazon, Flipkart, they are platform centric. That is, if you want to buy something, then you have to visit the Amazon or Flipkart platform. Same for selling also. But now, in case of ONDC, no such thing is needed. From now onwards, buyers registered on one particular e-commerce site may purchase goods from a seller on another participating e-commerce site. So this open network model provides us a major benefit of curbing digital monopolies by e-commerce behemoths such as Amazon and ending their unfair trade practices because it extends support to micro, small and medium enterprises and small traders. So from now on, these online traders will also be available on online platforms. Therefore, ONDC creates a level playing field for both online and offline traders, thereby democratizing digital commerce, hence a boost for small businesses. In short, we can say ONDC is a network of several small and large scale e-commerce players. Plus, it encourages easy adoption of digital means by those who are currently not on digital commerce networks. So it increases freedom of choice for consumers and ONDC will also make larger segment of buyers available to all the sellers on the network. Also it is a government backed platform. So due to the benefits it is expected that ONDC will bring on board 90 crore users and 12 lakh sellers on the network thereby enabling 730 crore additional purchases it is also expected to bring in an additional gross merchandising value of 3.75 crore rupees so now to achieve this the issues around the ondc have to be solved like it should be a seamless network which is user friendly and capable of giving a better shopping environment than e-com behemoths like amazon and flipkart it should also have a shift dispute resolution and the government should convince enough number of e-commerce platforms to sign up to ondc so as to attract customers so if these issues are solved then ondc will be a success like upi so that's all you have to know about this news article 
So in this news article discussion, we saw in detail about what is this ONDC. ONDC is nothing but Open Network for Digital Commerce. It is a first of its kind initiative to pay the way for reimagining digital commerce in India. It was conceived in 2020 by the Department for Promotion of Industry and Internal Trade under the Ministry of Commerce and Industry and it was commissioned through the Quality Council of India. So we saw some of the basic features of ONDC, then we saw some of the uses of this ONDC and finally we ended our discussion by seeing some of the benefits associated with this ONDC. So with these learned points, now let us move on to the next news article discussion. See this article here, it says that the silver anklet manufacturers have been demanding that a geographical indicator that is GI tag to be approved for the Salem silver anklets to prevent duplication by bigger jewelry manufacturers using mass manufacturing techniques. The anklets which are produced in Salem are sold to some of the largest jewelry sellers in India through middlemen. And the article also says that the recent announcement by the government to set up a production center for silver anklets will lower the manufacturing cost by bringing together producers of different components that go into making a silver anklet. So this is the crux of the news article given here. In this context, let us quickly understand about GI tag from prelims point of view. First of all, let us see what GI is. See, a geographical indication or GI is a sign used on products that have a specific geographical origin and possess qualities or a reputation that are due to that origin. In order to function as a GI, a sign must identify a product as originating in a given place. In addition, the qualities, characteristics or reputation of the product should be essentially due to the place of origin. Typically, such a name conveys an assurance of quality and distinctiveness which is essentially attributed to its origin. So basically GIs are location specific. Remember geographical indications are typically used for agricultural products, foodstuffs, wine and uh, spirit drinks, handicrafts and industrial products. So with this basic info now let us see some of the significance of GI. See a geographical indication right enables those who have the right to use the indication to prevent its use by a third party whose products does not conform to the applicable standards. For example, producers of Darjeeling tea can exclude use of the term Darjeeling for tea not grown in their tea gardens or not produced according to the standards set out in the code of practice for the geographical indication. But however, a protected geographical indication does not enable the holders to prevent someone from making a product using the same techniques as those set out in the standards for that indication. Now for the legality of it, see geographical indications are covered as an element of IPRs under Article 1, Clause 2 and 10 of the Paris Conference for the Protection of Industrial Property. They are also covered under trade related aspects of intellectual property rights that is TRIPS agreement which was part of the agreement concluding the Uruguay round of GATT negotiations. See as you know India is a member of WTO that is World Trade Organization. It enacted the Geographical Indication of Goods Registration and Protection Act 1999 to award GI tags. Now that the act has come into force with effect from September 2003. So that's all you have to know about GI tag. In this news article discussion, we saw about what is this GI tag and some of the significance of it. GI tag is a sign used on products that have a specific geographical origin and possess qualities or a reputation that are due to that origin. We saw that. And one of its most important significance is that it prevents the usage by a third party whose product does not conform to the applicable standards. Geographical indications are typically used for agricultural products, foodstuffs, wine and spread drinks, handicrafts and industrial products. We saw that. So these learned points. Now let us move on to the next news article discussion. Now take a look at this news article. See, it says that India's government will not be able to cut its budget deficit this fiscal year as previously projected. But it will seek to cap the shortfall at last year's level to prevent a major deterioration in public finances. And this is the essence of this news article. In this context, let us see some of the important points that are mentioned in the news article about fiscal discipline. First of all, what is this budget deficit? 
See, a budget deficit occurs when a government spends more in a given year than it collects in revenues, like taxes, bills, etc. So, as a simple example, if a government takes in 10 billion as revenue in a particular year and its expenditure for the same year or 12 billion, then it is running a deficit of 2 billion. And this is when the government will borrow to bridge the deficit. And this is called as fiscal deficit. See, as per the article, efforts to maintain fiscal discipline reflects concern around risks to its sovereign credit rating. This is because the credit rating of a government will become low if it borrows more. And at the same time, if the government maintains fiscal discipline, then it limits the government's power to check inflation and provide relief to households and businesses. Hope you can understand the situation here. See, in February, the government set a fiscal deficit target of 6.4% of GDP for the year 2023. Here, know that the fiscal deficit for the fiscal year 2021 is 6.7%. But the increased spending to provide relief from inflation will make the government miss this year's target of 6.4%. So, if you are wondering why this is happening, see, this is because the surging cost forced India to cut fuel taxes and change duty structures. And this affected the revenue by about $19.16 billion. And adding to this, the fertilizer subsidies lifted the expenditure. See, the government and central bank have made efforts to contain prices through fiscal measures and monetary tightening after inflation jumped to multi-year high. Now, as we already saw, government is aware of the risk that fiscal slipperage poses risk to its sovereign credit ratings. The debt to GDP ratio is standing at 95 percentage, which is significantly higher than the 60 to 70 percentage levels for other similarly rated economies. And as per the article, the situation leaves the government with little room to provide additional relief as the measures that are already taken are expected to increase the deficit by more than 30 basis points if revenue collection does not exceed the budget target. But if more steps are taken, it will require additional market borrowing and that will increase the yields and eventually cause higher inflation. So these are all some of the important points that you have to make note of. See, topics like these are very important because these articles reflect the government's decisions on particular issue. So in this news article discussion, we saw about budget deficit and we saw why the government is missing this year's target of reaching 6.4% of GDP. So these learned points, now let us move on to the next part of the news article discussion, which is the preliminary practice questions. See, today we have three practice questions. In that, I'll solve two questions and the last question is the quiz question for you. Now look at this first question. This question is about open network for digital commerce. You have to choose which one of the following is or are the benefits of ONDC. Statement 1. Interoperable digital commerce network. Statement 2. Platform centric model. Statement 3. Curbing digital monopolies. Statement 4. Democratized digital commerce. Select the correct answer from the codes given below. Option A. 1, 2 and 3 only. Option B. 2 and 4 only. Option C. 1, 3 and 4 only. And option D. 1, 2, 3 and 4. See, all the statements except statement 2 is correct here because in the discussion itself, we saw that ONDC is not platform centric. Rather, it is an open network model. So, here statement 2 will not be in the answer. If you can eliminate statement 2, you can easily arrive at the answer which is option C, 1, 3 and 4 only. Now, moving on to second question. See, this question is about GI tag. Consider the following statements regarding geographic indication. Statement 1, geographic indications can be provided only to agricultural and food products. Statement 2, GI tag is awarded by the Secretary of the Ministry of Commerce and Industry. Which of the above statements is or are incorrect? So you have to choose the incorrect statement. Option A, 1 only. Option B, 2 only. Option C, both 1 and 2. And option D, neither 1, not 2. See, the correct answer for the question is option C, both 1 and 2. Both the statements given here are incorrect. Statement 1 is wrong because GI is primarily an agricultural, natural or a manufactured product originating from a definite geographical territory. So, the tag can be given to 
handicrafts and industrial products also which makes statement 1 as incorrect now moving on to statement 2 statement 2 is also incorrect here because ji tag is awarded by the geographical indications registry which is under the department of promotion of industry and internal trade that comes under ministry of commerce and industry and it is as per the geographical indication of goods registration and protection act 1999 gi tag is valid for 10 years and it can be renewed afterwards for another 10 years know that first product that was awarded gi tag in india was darjeeling tea tamil nadu and karnataka has the highest number of gi tags in india just for your information so the correct answer for this question is option c both 1 and 2 because both the statements are incorrect here now moving on to the quiz question see this question is about deficit we saw about deficit in our discussion right so find the correct answer and post the correct answer in the comment section i'll tell whether your answer is right or not so displayed here is the main question for today's discussion just go through the question write an answer and post it in the comment section with this we came to the end of the news article discussion if you like the video hit like do comment and don't forget to subscribe to shankarais academy youtube channel thank you